Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 13th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I mentioned that we do sort of have that background hum on port 1801, the Microsoft Message Queue port. I set up a quick Netcat listener on the port today to get a little bit uh, more intelligence and posted the payload that I'm predominantly seeing on this port right now. It looks kind of like a Microsoft Message Queue message, but I haven't quite been able to uh, really sort of decode it yet. If anybody has more experience with the protocol, any help would be appreciated. It does more look to me like a simple reconnaissance where someone is basically just checking if a particular host is actually responding properly to this request. I mentioned there are a number of uh, vulnerabilities that uh, this particular service was affected by in recent years. In so far, it's not a big surprise to already have people looking for responsive servers. And yesterday I mentioned that I hadn't seen any Adobe updates yet. Uh, Well, uh, they're out now. Not exactly sure uh, when they were released, if it was uh, later yesterday or uh, today. Adobe fixes uh, 10 different uh, products and multiple vulnerabilities uh, for each one of their products. Just want to highlight two products here that I find uh, tend to be the ones that uh, typically get people in trouble. First one is uh, Adobe Commerce uh, with eight critical vulnerabilities uh, being fixed. A server-side request forgery here with a CVSS score of 8.5. We do also have an XML external entity uh, reference. Uh, don't see uh, too many of them uh, these days. Uh, 9.8 is the CVSS score on that one. And uh, then another one that sort of uh, sounds interesting, an unrestricted upload of a file with dangerous type. So that typically means that an unauthenticated user may be able to upload something like a web shell. And even though we only have important vulnerabilities, but probably Also worthwhile pointing out that there are two vulnerabilities being patched in Cold Fusion. One of them is an arbitrary file system read, which depending on what files are accessible could certainly almost uh, amount to a critical vulnerability in uh, some use cases. And as a little postscript to yesterday's Microsoft patch Tuesday, Symantec uh, published a blog post stating that the Black Basta ransomware took advantage of a Windows error reporting service privilege escalation vulnerability prior to it being patched back in March. Whenever we look at Microsoft's patches, we look at if they are stating that the details have been publicly known or if a particular vulnerability has already been exploited yet. That, of course, assumes that Microsoft knows about the exploitation. In particular, something like a privilege escalation vulnerability that is being exploited can easily be missed in the forensics following up on a ransomware infection. So uh, this may explain that at the time the patch was released, it hadn't really been made known yet that this vulnerability was already exploited. There are also sometimes of discussions uh, between research and Microsoft. If a researcher already created a proof of concept exploit and submitted it to Microsoft, Microsoft usually does not consider this as an exploit being publicly available because the exploit has not been posted to the public yet, just privately communicated with Microsoft. And Google also released its monthly updates for Android, there are seven critical vulnerabilities and a good number of high and moderate vulnerabilities that are being addressed in this update. One of the vulnerability which specifically affects the Pixel phone is already being exploited according to Google. And a 
Correction to yesterday's podcast, a few listeners pointed out that I guess I called Microsoft's browser Brave, Brave, great browser, but it's not made by Microsoft. What I meant to say was Microsoft's Edge browser. Of course, both are built on top of the same Chromium uh, open source software. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.